So the market itself is de facto discounting 45% earnings growth this year, which has happened in the past. It's not a zero event. It's happened 3% of the time in the past. So call it a one in 30 event. But when you normally get a 45% earnings boom in a year, you're typically coming out of recession, let alone a soft landing, let alone possibly or probably heading into recession. So this market is, uh, you got the analysts saying, we're going to have a, a soft landing that's going to generate 11% growth in earnings. The stock market's saying how it's priced, never mind soft landing. Economist David Rosenberg has been sounding the recession alarm in recent months, and he now thinks that the likelihood of the U.S. seeing a contraction this year is much higher. The head of Rosenberg Research believes that a recession is four times more likely than an economic expansion. He emphasizes that it's only a matter of time before more signals emerge, bringing the recession narrative back into focus. The U.S. gross domestic product, a comprehensive gauge of economic activity, surged at a robust annualized rate of 3.2% in the fourth quarter, following a remarkable 4.9% rate in the previous three months. The Atlanta Federal Reserve forecasts a more moderate expansion of 2.1% for the first quarter 2024. Federal Reserve officials anticipate that overall growth for 2024 will reach 2.1%, followed by 2% growth in the subsequent two years. David highlights significant disparities and inconsistencies in the data. He notes that despite a reported increase in real GDP, real gross domestic income has remained stagnant over the past year. This discrepancy underscores an unprecedented gap between spending and income accounts. Despite recent positive economic indicators, American consumers are expressing reduced confidence this month, amid mounting concerns about a potential recession. In February, employers added 275,000 jobs, pushing the unemployment rate to 3.9% from 3.7%, yet it has maintained below the 4% threshold for over two years. A White House analysis revealed to CNN suggests that approximately 10% of U.S. workers hold jobs at the most significant risk of disruption due to rapidly advancing artificial intelligence. David believes that a recession may already be underway, though he clarifies that it's part of the business cycle and not an attempt to cause alarm. We've gathered some insights that we'd like to share with you. Before we proceed with the video analysis, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. The U.S. economy is going strong at all. I think it comes down to a case of uh, beauty being in the eyes of the beholder. Uh, we have uh, discrepancies and dichotomies uh, in the data that I have not seen in my 40 years in this business. Uh, we, I mean, we have, for example, 3.1% uh, growth year over year in real GDP. And of course, that gets all the uh, attention. Uh, but there's been no growth in the past year in real gross domestic income. Uh, the gap between the spending accounts, which is what GDP is, and the income accounts uh, has never been this wide before. Uh, we've had no growth at all in the past year in industrial production. And uh, while you can argue that uh, non-farm payrolls have remained robust, of course, every single month of non-farm payrolls, the previous month is being revised lower. But we have 1.8% um, growth in non-farm payrolls, but only 0.4% growth in the household survey. Uh, that's equivalent uh, in terms of differential of almost 2 million jobs. Uh, so I would just submit uh, to the viewers that if the payroll survey looked like the household survey and the household survey is running flat and, and all the jobs in the past year in that survey has all been part-time, uh, but if you were going to replace the payroll survey with household survey and you're going to replace GDP with GDI, uh, you'd come to a different conclusion about the shape of the U.S. economy right now. What is the catalyst that's going to cause a reacceleration of the economy, I frankly can't really find one. And we could talk about the AI craze, but that's really a, a secular development. You know, the uh, the explosion of dot-coms and the internet and the World Wide Web um, didn't stop the economy from going into recession back in, you know, you know 2001. Uh, that's a secular shift in productivity, but not enough to stop the economy from embarking on uh, an outright recession, which, by the way, I think is starting right now. I, I don't, you know, my, my intention here is not to scare anybody. This is not a medical diagnosis. Recessions are part of the business cycle. It just so happens that nobody really likes to talk about them. And at the first opportunity 
like you saw last year, economists will throw in the towel on the recession call when it doesn't happen, just like they did in 2000 and like they did in 2007. But uh, delayed is not the same as derailed. And there were some leverage-related factors that kept GDP growth alive and well last year. But there's other components of the economy, like I said before, that are not ratifying that 3% GDP growth. And now the GDP growth is going to start, and it's already starting, it's going to start to uh, revert to where that trend, that flat trend in, in real income and industrial production are right now. Uh, will a recession upset the apple cart? Of course it will. Again, under the premise that it actually happens. Like I said, it didn't happen last year in the most traditional sense, looking at GDP. And um, those other metrics I mentioned were flat. They weren't negative. However, you go from positive to flat. Uh, there's still the policy lags to kick in. Where do you go next? So I think that a recession is still my base case scenario. Uh, I'm not throwing in the towel because if I threw in the towel in 2007, uh, I would have looked like an idiot. While the economy was technically growing again by May 2020, after the shortest recession on record, the fallout from the economic measures to cope with the COVID-19 outbreak is still being felt today. Throughout the Fed's rate hike history, officials have rarely been able to slow the economy without kickstarting a recession. David points out that every downturn has been followed by a period of rising rates, with a typical lag of two years between the onset of rate hikes and the onset of a recession. Even if the Fed eventually cuts interest rates this year, borrowing costs will likely stay higher than in the pandemic era. While examining current indicators, David notes negative trends in various economic metrics during the first quarter. These include negative housing starts, retail sales, and industrial production, all historically signify economic contraction. Now let's redirect our attention to a video. Why does the Fed cut rates? The Fed is not cutting rates in a recession with only thing on its mind uh, about uh, cutting interest expense. They're thinking about this will stimulate borrowing activity and it will stimulate spending activity because the cost of financing big ticket items has gone down. So this notion that you brought in front of me, which I've heard before, by the way, it's basically, um, you know, a, a ridiculous notion that rising rates are good news for a credit driven economy. Uh, and it doesn't mean that rising rates don't mean that savers benefit. They do. You'd have to come back and say to me, well, this higher interest income is going to be used to work in the economy. I mean, you talk about the cash flow boost from their holding of financial assets. Well, what are they doing with that money? So let's say that company X, as you just said, uh, is making more profits because of their financial holdings. Is that staying as part of the retained earnings? Is it staying being stuck on their income statement or is it being put to use in the real economy? So this is these are the things, you know, people just people just say things that I don't know why. And then people don't even have a real comeback. But um, there's a reason why every recession was followed by a period of rising rates. And by the way, the traditional lag between the onset of the tightening cycle and the onset of the recession is two years. So the Fed first started raising rates in March of 2022. And we are now exactly two years later. And what do you know? Let's look at the first quarter. First quarter, housing starts are running negative 9.6% at an annual rate over the fourth quarter average with one month to go. Real retail sales are running negative so far in the first quarter, and so is industrial production. And that only happens in an economic expansion historically, 3% of the time. Uh, you're 12 times more likely to be in a recession. When these three major indicators are going down in tandem in any given quarter, housing starts, industrial production, retail sales volumes. And uh, I just finding so many people are living off last year's fourth quarter and not recognizing that the first quarter is looking totally different. The recession could actually be starting right now. And in fact, the data are telling me that. This is what happens. The market will trade off the rate cut. Uh, the market will believe that the Fed to save the day, um, but invariably, the day will not be saved until the Fed cuts the funds rate sufficiently to steepen the yield curve uh, enough to generate the economic recovery. Uh, and that's going to be some time away. So you'll get a tradable rally on a Fed rate cut, but it's a, a rally you'll rent but not want to own. 
the U.S. economy is either doing well or poorly, depending on how you look at it and who's looking. America's central bank doesn't see any signs of a recession on the horizon, not this year nor the year after. The Goldman Sachs chief economist made a name for himself by making the opposite call in 2008, warning that toxic mortgages would ignite a recession. What are your thoughts on whether the U.S. is anticipating a recession? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.